Good afternoon. Welcome. My name is Harry Totten. We are live here on Co-U TV at the JobServe Community Stadium as Hayden Mullins and the boys take on Wigan Athletic here in the second round of this year's FA Cup. You can't beat a bit of FA Cup excitement. The U secured their place in the second round with a thrashing, a 4-0 thrashing of Sudbury Town in uh, the first round and an upset was wanted by many. The live TV cameras were there, everyone queued up, thousands wanted to watch. Cole, you get turned over, but the boys kept it professional, did the job, and here we are in round two, taking on Wigan, where actually we'll be the ones hoping for an upset today. Wigan, arguably the highest ranked team in the competition at this stage. They are sitting pretty joint top of League One uh, with Rotherham, uh, tied only on goal difference. So it's gonna be a tough task for the youth today, but, it's the FA Cup, the magic of the cup. Anything can happen with both teams desperate to get to that infamous third round draw where we could be drawn against anyone. We want the big six or maybe even Man United. Who knows? But Wigan first and uh, a tough one indeed. Um, we've got plenty for you today. We've got Hayden Mullins will be speaking to us. Alan Judge will hear from two, plus a classic encounter from Colchester versus Wigan a few years ago. But first, let's just remind ourselves how we got to the second round of the FA Cup. Well collected by O'Malley and he's got it through to Marley Andrews. Oh, a shooting chance for Andrews and well saved by George. An early opportunity for the non-league side. That's a really good save. Lovely touch from Jasper, who started this game really well. Oh, what a chance! Wiridu sees his shot saved by Josh Blunkel, the teenage goalkeeper. Well, he really should have buried this, but credit to the young keeper for the save. Chilvers. Oh, it's going to fall for Wiridu, and this time he does score. And he could hardly miss. It all came from a throw-in. Noah Chilvers with the cross. It just got a deflection off the head of the defender here, I think. Yes, Turner and Wiridu stuck it away. And Colchester take the lead with 10 minutes to go until half-time. Jasper, Chilvers. Eastman, Wiridu, oh a chance for Sears, brilliantly placed, and that is 2-0 to Colchester, two goals in the space of four minutes here, and this time Wiridu gets the assist, brilliant from Freddie Sears to get his sixth goal of the season, and Colchester with a vice-like grip on this FA Cup tie. Oh, they've switched off from the corner, and Jasper scores a cracker! Well, he's deserved that for his individual performance. But look, no one goes across as they take a quick corner, and the man on loan from Fulham finds the top corner in scintillating style for his second goal of the season. And it goes and collected by Grimwood and he'll get the shot in here and Shamal George makes the save on his near post great work from the strapping centre half out to Hannant he has Mikulski in the middle there he is and it's a debut goal in stoppage time for Sean Mikulski and it's 4-0 to Colchester what a brilliant performance from Hayden Mull inside. There we have it. A professional performance indeed. And a couple of fantastic goals as well as a debut goal for Sean Mikulski. And Freddie has continued his scoring form uh, since that game, netting recently against Exeter and Newport. And the, the Newport game finished 1-1. Freddie's goal assisted by Alan Judge, who came off the bench after seven weeks out and how we missed him. He came back, made an immediate impact with a magical pass through to Freddie Sears, who did the rest. 
as we know he does more often than not these days. And Judge managed to repeat his feat on, ch on Tuesday. Uh, we played Swindon Town in the Papa John's Trophy. A cold, wet, windy night away at Swindon. Alan Judge with two assists and both goals scored by Luke Chambers. The second, a perfectly drilled cross from the corner, straight into the wind, a soaring Luke Chambers. Free header, back post, and the user through to the last 16 of the Papa John's Trophy. Perhaps Wembley is on the horizon. And there's another very long road to Wembley on the horizon today. It's the FA Cup. Uh, Alan Judge will be hoping for more against a very strong Wigan side. And we heard from him earlier on in the week. Uh, well, first of all, it goes without saying you're delighted to be back and, and back playing and, and starting and, and contributing. Yeah, it's been a long seven weeks. Um, a lot longer than it should have been. And didn't expect to be, but I'm glad I'm back and it's over and done with. And contributing as well. I mean, when we spoke to you a few weeks before the injury, you said you were surprised you maybe hadn't got a few more assists already this season. Three and two games now. Yeah, yeah, it is. And, uh, you know, I could have had five or six in the last two games. So the good thing is that they're starting to go now and hopefully a few more become. Because the criticism of the team earlier in the season was weren't scoring enough goals and maybe not creating those opportunities. But, I mean, Freddie Sears is showing the opportunities are there and the goals are starting to go in as well. Yeah, Freddie's got very good movement when he's up through the middle and. Um, I think in the last few games we've seen we've been scoring goals, so I think it was just a matter of time we got to know each other. I feel like we've turned the corner with the performances in the last few weeks. So um, as long as we can keep going, um, I think we'll be all right. With with yourself and someone like Freddie, you always know he's going to make those runs. I think yeah. he makes sort of two or three runs, doesn't he, before he eventually gets found? Yeah, it's quite easy. I know I don't even. I'll have to look at ones and then that's it. And with being with Freddie the last two or three years, I kind of know where he's going to go, so that, that helps a lot. And you're finding time in the centre of the park to, to be able to do that as well, what's going on around you. Yeah, exactly. And it's quite easy when you've got someone like Scusi who does all the sweeping up and, you know, I think Scusi is, what, 36? Doesn't look it. He's running, running more than anybody. So when you're playing with someone like that who picks up everything for you, it's easy to find space. Yeah. He is someone in the team. He maybe wasn't the most eye-catching signing during the summer, but as you say, he does everything. He does exactly what it says on the team, doesn't he? And, you know, chasing bat, last man, making tackles like a Carlisle. He did yeah. one home game here as well. He, he offers so much, doesn't he? Yeah, I always said to him, imagine if you wore white boots, imagine look how quick you'd be. Um, people think Scusi is slow, he's far from him. I think he's one of the quickest in the club. Um, yeah, people like Scusi don't get the credit that they deserve, mm. and I think he's finally getting that now. Do you get more excitement coming into the FA Cup in the second round, the third round's just around the corner if you can get the job done on Sunday? Yeah, I was just hoping that we didn't get anybody in our league to be honest with you, because you want to be playing against, you know, I do like playing against the teams that are in conference and obviously you want to play against the teams that are above you, so we'll be looking forward to it. I don't know what they're going to do on Sunday, but it'll be a big occasion for the club. Yeah, this is the thing, isn't it? I, mean, I think what you said there is, is probably quite right, that you don't want someone from the same division because no. maybe it doesn't feel like the cup then. No, because yeah, you could end up playing them four times, you know, with a replay or whatever, so... I've always been one that I don't like playing against teams in my own league, especially in the Cup, so I'm happy with anybody else that's not in my league. What you have got is, is the joint highest ranked side left in it, though, in Wigan, and going great this year. Yeah, great, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> no, it is uh, it's a test that we're looking forward to. As I said before, I feel like we've got some good young players that are getting more games under the belt, and really looking forward to Sunday. Hopefully, I'm, I'm confident that we can give them a good run. Yeah, and we, we talked about the boot beyond the floor, obviously, against Sudbury, it was very different, where there was nerves from the fans about... Yeah. Don't want to get knocked out by, by a non-league side again as well. Maybe you can reverse it with Wigan and, and put the pressure on them. Yeah, we have to go for them straight from the off and uh, just see how it goes, you know, put pressure on them. Um, I think with the players that they have, they'll address it professionally. They've got the type of players that they have there. We know quite well. They're quite professional in what they do, so it will be a tough game and hopefully we can catch them on the off day. We talked to Luke Chambers after the game on, on Tuesday night and he, he said we feel like we've turned a corner, we, we feel like now we've made real progress and, and this is beginning to look like the real us as it were. I think so, I think uh, the players that have come here are getting used to the league, you know, of certain, certain times of when to play and not to play, I think we're playing to our strengths now and you know I think it's just, it's just come together at the moment and long way that continue. Interesting what you say there about players getting used to the league because I think a lot of people on the outside look at it like you drop down a level and you just carry on doing what you're doing because, you, because you're better players but I guess you have to work the league out. Yeah you do, you have to work every league out, it's all, it's all different so um, it does surprise me the amount of football that does be getting played in the league, I'll be honest, the amount of games that I've watched, there is a lot of teams trying to play football which is good but then there is some of the physical teams that just want to get in your face so you do have to adapt to every game as it comes, you can't play them all the same. 
and you are going to enjoy December, which is amazing with the football that you've missed, just the sheer weight of games you've got. Yeah, yeah, I will do, and you know, I want, aim to keep myself fit. I never had a calf injury before, so I think it was a bit of a precaution the way I was coming back, and I enjoy Christmas time. Yeah, I actually probably my favourite time playing all the games around Christmas, so looking forward to a big time. Well, they're the thoughts of Alan Judge, who's been working hard at Florence Park with the rest of the squad this week in order to try and get that result today that we need against Wigan Athletic. And we'll have some messages of support for the boys on the big screen uh, next to the pitch prior to kickoff. And you can have your name on the big screen prior to kickoff in a future match. You can email if it's your birthday, an anniversary, or just a big hello. You can email us at media at colchesterunited.net. And that's just what we've got right now is we have some birthday shout outs for twins Johnny and Annie. It's your 12th birthday. Happy birthday to you two. It's a Johnny's favourite player is Noah Chilvers, the magician in the middle of the park. And Annie, clearly a bit more defensive, likes the clean sheets of Tom Eastman and Shamal George. They're your favourite players. We wish you a very happy birthday and let's hope we're in the third round for you. And also it's your younger brother Leo's eighth birthday on Tuesday. That's a uh, a busy week for the family there. And Leo's favourite player is Sylvester Jasper, who we saw score a fantastic goal versus Sudbury in that first round. And also netted wonderfully against Exeter a few weeks ago as well. He'll look to wreak havoc today for the Wigan defence. And a very warm welcome to Fungi, who is here from Zimbabwe. It's his first match here at Colchester United. We hope the first of many. Let's hope it's a wonderful game for you and that you are a lucky charm cheering us on into the third round draw. Now, the youth have been building momentum in the league. They are unbeaten in six of the last seven matches, all under the watchful eye of head coach Hayden Mullins, who spoke to us earlier this week as well. Well, I mean, we spoke briefly about the cup before, and we, and we said ahead of the Sudbury game that mm -hmm. you knew why the TV cameras were there. Boot very much on the other foot this time. Yes, yeah, yeah, um, very much so. I think uh, we're up against a good side. We know that. Um, the highest ranked side in the, in the round at the moment, so uh, we know it'd be a tough game. And uh, like you say, it's the onus is on them. I think uh, I think we've earned the right to to go there with a bit of confidence and uh, really go and enjoy the game, but attack it at the same time. So that's what we're trying to do. Um, it's a good tie for us, a real good tie to go up against a very good side. And uh, the rewards there for for the third round in the in the next round would be brilliant for the club. Yeah, they're, they're having a good season, but 2013 winners of this competition, I don't yeah. think there are many who will forget that final, quarterfinals and semi-finals in, in recent history as well. And you look at the record not that long ago, a Premier League club as well. I mean, who would have come up against them in the Premier League, I'm sure? Yeah, 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 good side. Um, like you say, it's a, it's a club now with with history behind it. You know, it's a, it's a real, you know, I know it's a bit of a rugby town and they never used to get many fans. And but like you say, they, you know, recent winners in 2013 of the FA Cup and... Um, you know, very recently in the Premier League as well, so you know, I'm sure they'll be looking at us and targeting us as a game where they want to win. I think they'll be they'll be very much full strength, I would imagine. Um, so it'll be a tough tie, like I said. It'll be you know it'll be a tough tie, but it's an exciting one for us. It's, it really is. It's uh, it's a tie where we can go into the game and, and really attack it and uh, and put ourselves up against a real good league one side and, and see see where we are. Yeah, you must look at it as well. It's one defeat in seven for your team in all competitions as well. You feel you've, you've, you've turned a corner now and, and, and you've got a clear way of the way you can see things progressing? Yeah, yeah, we hope so. We hope so. We really want to try and build on on our momentum and uh, we spoke about that on Tuesday against Swindon. It's just really trying to just keep it going and, and the good feeling and, and what a win bring, brings. It brings a real good uh, atmosphere in the dressing room. Um, an air of confidence, and we just want to, you know, keep building on it. And we really want to, we really want to do that again Sunday. You know, we, we, we want to attack the game. We're at home. Um, our form has sort of turned upside down at home, and, and you know, we're, we're looking okay at home. So it'd be a really good game for us. Uh, uh, you know, it's the FA Cup and the excitement it brings. And we saw that with Sudbury away. I mean, we, we went down to Sudbury, and it's a fantastic atmosphere. You know, the fans were there, the, the TV cameras were there, and it's the buzz that the FA Cup brings. And um, I'm sure it'll be similar Sunday. You say you want to attack the game, but obviously you're coming up against the side that's joint top of League One at the moment, so you've yeah, got to be yeah. careful about how you go about it. You can't go gung ho from ball one, can you? No, 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 no. But we we want to try and impose ourselves on the game as well. I mean, if we if we if we try to camp in and sit in, it could be a long afternoon, you know. Um, especially if they've got an early goal or whatever, then it's you know it becomes a long afternoon. So we want to. We want to really impose ourselves on the game. However that is, however we, we want to try and attack them. We really want to take the game to them as well because for 
For everything that the FA Cup throws it throws up, I think we played Sudbury, and I think if you asked their managers after the game how they wanted to attack it again, I think they would have really tried to get after us. I thought they they sat off and thought probably that was the best tactic, but it really helped us in terms of building up a bit of momentum and enjoying the ball, and we sort of grew into the game really well that night. So. Um, you know, we want to attack Wigan. We don't want it to be an easy game from by any stretch of the imagination. We want it to be a tough game, and um, we really want to try and try and take the game to them. And I think that's the best way to attack it. Really, I think I think going as a bigger club to maybe a lower league club, and I've, I've you know I've been there myself as a player. I remember we got knocked out at Chesterfield, where the atmosphere was up, and you know they attacked us you know straight from the first minute. We got the early goal, but it still didn't knock them off their stride. Their disbelief that night, and you know they beat us. I think we've got to try and turn up something like that on Sunday. I really do. I think we've got to look after ourselves in terms of what we do and how we how we attack the game and, and see what we can get out of it. Yeah, you look back at cup shops over the years, it is built on obviously the attitude of the underdog as it were, but also the build up around it as well and, and what the atmosphere from the fans can generate and really do as well. Yeah, no, definitely. I think um, you know, we we'd love the fans to come there and make noise and make it tough for Wigan and, and really play it play their part as well. But like you say, I think we got to drum that on the pitch, so we've got to give the fans something to really shout about, if we can. Um, and like I say, I don't want us to sit back and, and you know, really soak it up. Uh, we respect them. They're a good side, you know. The, 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 league, the league shows you that. But uh, I think, like I said, if it was Sudbury and, and they had it again, I think they'd really attack us. So that's what we want to try and do, you know. We, we want to go after them. We respect them. Uh, we know we're the underdogs, but uh, we want to make life difficult for them if we can. There you have it. A man with lots of FA Cup success, Hayden Mullins, says we're going to attack Wigan in order to get through to the next round. Uh, it's going to be a good matchup. Wigan naming a strong squad as well. A formal, uh, familiar face, should I say, Gavin Massey, who had many goals here for the U start for Wigan today. Um, Alan Judge also confident we've got what it takes to get us through to Monday's draw. And this is the team that Hayden Mullins um, has named uh, today to take on Wigan. So we have Jake Turner in goal, who stepped in for Shamal George. Jake Turner on loan from Newcastle. Since he started for the U's, um, he's had two, he's been named in the team of the week, the League Two team of the week, twice in a week. Sensational. I mean, you can't ask for more than that. We hope for another clean sheet from him today. Uh, the back four today looks as if it's going to be Junior Chamadu, Luke Chambers, who scored twice in the week. More, from, more of that from him. Tommy Smith and Cameron Cox filling in at left back. Cole Skuse holds the fort in the middle of the park, um, just behind Noah Chilvers. And that architect, Alan Judge, with the threats of Sylvester Jasper out wide with Armando Dobra, both uh, hopefully terrify that Wigan defence. And Freddie Sears, the goal machine, Freddie starts up top once again. Uh, on the bench today, we have Dean Gherkin. Uh, uh, Brendan Wiridu is, is back on the bench after injury. And then lots of youth on the bench today with Jake Hutchinson, Marley Marshall Miranda, Samson Tavide, Che Cooper, and Harry Beadle. Uh, Sean Mikulski got his first goal for the use uh, in the previous round. And Charlie Daniels on the bench as well. That experience and that wonderful effort off the bench. Uh, it's the guys missing from the lineup today. Uh, Tom Eastman unfortunately has COVID. We wish him all the best. And Shamal George hopefully due back very soon from injury. So that's the lineup for for today's game. It's going to be a good one. We're strong. They're strong. Both teams in decent form. Let's see how we go. And that's it from us today. Um, but please do join us in the week. Lee Partridge will be back with the midweek show. Uh, head out to the stands. Make some noise for the boys if you're here. And also, if you listen on the radio, make some noise as well. I do it. It always seems to work. So give us a nice shout out. We'll see you here in the week. And we're going to leave you with highlights of a thriller as Colchester take on Wigan back in March 2016. Up the use, and we'll see you soon. Thank you.